It is probably sa safe to say that unless someone has had personal contact with the courts, the average citizen does not think too often about the impact of the judicial system on their daily lives. In most instances, this is probably a good thing, and it means we are doing our jobs effectively. Our role as court professionals is often to work quietly in the background, making that system work. Our goal is for citizens to know that they and their families can obtain justice when they are wronged, and that it is much wiser to have the system take care of these situations rather than taking justice into their own hands. As court professionals, we see the effect our system can have on individuals, families, and businesses. The manner in which our offices conduct our daily business and the competence in which we do so can be the difference between someone being denied their freedom or receiving effective access to justice. There are a myriad of circumstances that can be seen as barriers to justice. When you look at the individuals on the screen, as an administrator, your mind can float to any number of possible needs this woman might have that could get in the way of serving her. Can she speak and read English? Does she need childcare while she is in court? You know the list. Like ourselves, the citizens we serve lead complicated lives and getting them what they need can have its own complications. Beyond the effect on individual customers, the field of court administration has an effect on society as well. The degree of professionalism and competence that court professionals display is crucial in keeping the judicial system legitimate in the eyes of the public. As refer referenced by Alexander Eichmann in the Art and Practice of Court Administration, modern court administration is not yet two generations old. In the early days of court administration, the tasks, the tasks assigned to the administrator were only those not performed by the clerk of court. Administrators were brought in to relieve judges of the burden of budget administration, personnel management, and maybe some of the interbranch coordination efforts. The position has changed and evolved and grown along with the growth and, and increasing complexity of courts themselves. There is merit in examining court administration through a conceptual framework which should provide fresh thinking about our priorities when it is difficult to respond to all the internal and external demands on one's resources, or as Eichmann calls it, the hierarchy of court administration. We now serve as a liaison between the judicial branch and the other branches of government. NACOM's core competencies provide us with a strong framework to move forward, to create and to expand our purpose and identity. Beyond dealing with the immediate issues that come through our doors, we also need to be proactive. For instance, are you ready for the multiple days without power or alternate, alternate sites available to hold court in the event your courthouse suffers from water, fire, and other natural disasters? We also need to be cognizant of the trends we see and be confident to offer our suggestions to those who can best assist. Through our voices and our profession, we can best help those we serve, both the court users and our judges. As administrators of courts, we must first assess the issues our communities place before our courts. One aspect of our role is to engage in critical conversations on these issues which will lead to implementing solutions. In January 2018, COSCA and CCJ adopted a resolution on the principles of fines, fees, and bails practices submitted by the National Task Force, and NACOM supported this resolution. Collectively, as court managers, we recognize the value of these principles and encourage and support courts to review and implement these principles in their courts. Collectively, as court managers, we recognize the value of these principles and encourage and support courts to review and implement the principles in their courts. We are well aware some courts may experience difficult challenges attempting to implement these principles, while yet recognizing how the assortment of these principles speak directly to the public's perception of our courts. One specific plea from our communities that has been heard and is being addressed is, the, is assistance to combat the opioid crisis in this country. Drug courts and treatment courts for our citizens is not something new this year or even this decade, yet its need has never been greater. 
We have made inroads in individual cases in stemming the tide of this epidemic. One viable practice is the utilization of medi medication-assisted treatment. A goal of courts is to identify defendants with substance, substance abuse issues as soon as possible and determine a course of treatment quickly. Courts have partnered with local law enforcement to assist these offenders at, at the time of arrest. NACAM is also in the position to start discussion on topics important to the court system. For instance, it is perhaps time to renew the conversation on the role of court administrators. The times are calling for more from court administrators than the traditional roles of case management, per per personnel management, security, record retention, and so on. As I have mentioned earlier, the role of the judiciary has been evolving over the past 30 years. Ever since the development of drug courts and the subsequent development of other specialty courts such as veterans courts and mental health courts, the role of judges and the judicial branch of government has been expanding. Because our conservative climate, our high ethical standards, our focus on fairness and transparency, and the power of the bench, we end up in a unique position to facilitate system partners in collaborating with one another. The modern court administrator can facilitate meetings of system partners, bringing in judges as needed and available. NACAM needs to ensure that court administrators are prepared for this role, that judges understand it, and that we leverage such partnerships to ensure that the public good is advanced at the same time the court's strategic plan is accomplished. Governance is the modern era, governance in the modern era demands greater efficiencies and effectively pooling all of our partners' resources is key. George Washington once wrote that he was impressed with a conviction that the due administration of justice is the firmest pillar of good government. He took his role in appointing our nation's first judges with a solemn air. That is indeed both high praise and an even higher calling for all of us. An organization is only as strong as its members. And to be sure, our membership numbers have been higher and could be in the tens of thousands. But the strength of our voice for our profession is not based on numbers alone, but by the strength of our dedication to not only our court profession, but to the work that we do in our courts.